So here we are with the heart. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how blood flows through the heart. And just taking a look at how our hearts are, it's quite a large heart, and that's nice because we are able to take a look at many of the chambers. But we're going to start here uh, coming back from systemic circulation. And specifically, we have to open up the heart itself to be able to kind of take a look inside the chamber. So this is our heart. Let's just get first orientated. This would then be considered the right side. This one would be considered the left side. And so we always start in the right side of the heart uh, as it comes back from systemic circulation into this first chamber called the right atrium. And what you'll find is that the right atrium itself has three openings, kind of illustrating where all the blood came from. So up here we have the opening of what we call the superior vena cava, which is this vessel here, draining all the blood from the above the heart and around the heart. And then down here you can actually see the gigantic hole of the inferior vena cava, which takes care of anything that's below the heart. Uh, you'll find that pretty much the inferior vena cava pierces the diaphragm and essentially enters the heart almost directly. Uh, and then the last one is if we have above the heart, around the heart, and below the heart, then this little guy right here, if you kind of take a look, this little hole, this would be considered what they call the coronary sinus, which actually takes blood directly from the heart. The myocardium, of course, has to have its own blood supply, so voila, we get our blood coming back from the myocardium into the, from this hole and all pulling into the right atrium. <clears throat> we notice that we find the textured walls on the right atrium, and this will be considered what we call pectinate muscles. And so pectinate muscles help with the atrial kick, uh, help push down the blood into the next area. We're going to pass through the tricuspid valve. So this is the tricuspid valve. It's also known as one of the AV valves or atrioventricular valves because of course it splits in between the atrium and the ventricles. Atrium and here's the ventricle. And here we are now with what we call the right ventricle. Uh, I want to point this out right away that right and left do matter because literally if you just say oh that's the ventricle I'm gonna be asking you right or left. So because they are very different in both functionality what they carry uh, but many of the structures are very similar. So as we step in here this is the right ventricle and some of the structures that are actually fairly remarkable are associated with the valve here. We'll notice some chordae tendinae, which are the tendinous strings or tendinous cords that come from the cusp of the valve, the tricuspid valve, attaching to specialized ridges of muscle. These are called papillary muscles. And so papillary muscles are here, and what they do is they help prevent prolapsing or regurgitation of blood into the atrium as they hold the cusp very, very tightly during ventricular contraction. So when the ventricles contract, the papillary muscles also contract, so they kind of hold the cusp so they don't blow back or, as we say, prolapse or uh, to prevent regurgitation of blood. So again, cusp of the valves, tricuspid valve, we get the chordae tendinae, we get the papillary muscles, and all this kind of like textured of this wall looks kind of like, uh, I think it looks like Freddy Krueger's face, but this is all what we call trabeculae carnae. Uh, trabeculae, you can imagine, it remembers from bone, but that's what we have, trabeculae carnae. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to exit out into what we call the pulmonary trunk, but we have to pass through a valve first, and this is actually found on this side. Uh, keeping my hand here, this is going to be the right side, as you can imagine. Right side is where my thumb is, and I'm going to flip this around. Notice I'm still in the right ventricle. This valve right here would be considered the pulmonary semilunar valve. So we're going to pump through here into what we call the pulmonary trunk, a very, very large artery. And this pulmonary trunk uh, right here is going to split into two, a right pulmonary artery, or sorry, this is a left, left pulmonary artery, and then the right one, as you can see from the posterior side, uh, would be here. So each one correlate. What we're going to do is going to oxygenate ourselves as we go out to the lungs and then come right back via pulmonary veins. I know people are like, hey, the veins aren't supposed to be red. Well, these are. Absolutely they are, because veins and arteries are defined not by what they carry, but by the direction of blood that they are going. And so if these guys are going blood away, then absolutely these are arteries. And if these bring in blood back to the heart, these are veins, so pulmonary veins. What they do is they end up into the left atrium, and voila, in the left atrium we have many of the same structures, like the pectinate muscles, the textured walls, and then now we're going to pass through what we call the bicuspid valve. Bicuspid, or also known as mitral. So once we step into here, we're back into the left ventricle, same structures, chordae tendinae with papillary muscles, with trabeculae cardae, and then ascends, we're going to get out through the first largest artery in our body, 
passing through what we call the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta. And then we actually have two first branches, what we call the right and left corner arteries of the heart. Uh, heart's kind of selfish like that. They always try to get what they want first. And so the first place that blood goes to is actually to the ventricles, uh, or actually to the heart itself, um, atrium 2, through the coronary arteries. So this one's the right coronary artery. That's the left coronary artery into the ascending aorta. We then become into the arch of the aorta which is right here. You can see it kind of arches about. And then off of the arch, it has three major branches. The first one, they go in order, brachiocephalic artery, and then left common carotid, and then left subclavian. Okay, so that's the left subclavian. And then once that's finished, the arch of the aorta becomes the descending aorta. And that's the uh, flow of blood through the heart. Let's kind of do a quick recap, just in terms of structures. We have the right atrium with the superior vena cava opening, the inferior vena cava opening, and the coronary sinus opening and the textured walls of the pectinate muscles. We pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle with chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles seeing the textured walls called the trabeculae carnae. We get pumped out through the pulmonary semilunar valve, which are right here, into the pulmonary trunk that's split into the left and right pulmonary artery. And then we come back via the pulmonary veins, the right and then the left, pulmonary veins into the left atrium that also has pectinate muscles through the bicuspid valve now. They have chordae tendinae, papillary muscles, trabeculae carnae, and then get pumped out through the aortic semilunar valve into the ascending aorta that branches first into the right and left coronary artery, into the arch aorta that has the brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid, and left subclavian. Aorta becomes the descending aorta, and then we're done.